Hello everyone, my name is Ashre from First Updates Now, and today I'm here at MTI with the giant diencephalic brainstem robotics team from Pennsylvania, team 8393. Uh, and today they'll be showing us their beautiful world record robot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. AFTC hey, fans, are you ready for Freight Frenzy? Join us after kickoff live all weekend, September 18th and 19th, as we'll be out at Kettering University for the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. You'll get detailed breakdowns of game elements, the field, and prototyping and testing of robot components and assemblies. Watch live, view short videos after, and ask questions for the Kettering team at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. Yeah, let's get into the robot. Let's see what it can do. Absolutely. All right, so the first set of the robot, uh, or the first part in the robot, is going to be this hybrid front collector here. Uh, and this is a collector that can collect both the upright rolling rings and those that are sitting flat on the ground. The first part is accomplished via this set of double chains in the back here. Uh, not only do they transfer power from side to side, but they also act as the device which knocks over the rings. Once the rings make contact with it, because it's rotating laterally to the way that the rings mo move into the robot, they're knocked down. From there, the robot doesn't discriminate from any of the rings, whether those be the ones that have been knocked down by the chain or those that are already lying flat. They're pulled in by this double set of poly belts, which run inverted to pull the ring in. Then, on the back of the robot, you also see we have a back collector, which is a little bit more simple. Its main job is just to pick up rings that have fallen on the ground. We don't need any vertical intake for this, uh, simply just because there's no rolling rings coming at the back collector. But what it does allow us to do uh, is grab those rings that have gone past us at the back of the field, uh, which ends up being very useful in many matches. Then, once the rings are collected, the back collector from here and the front collector both meet up in this inverted V uh, transfer system. And what they do is it brings up rings from one end and from the front, and they meet up at a central point right about here. From there, it turns in essentially into a vertical lift and then rotates it all the way up to this front end right here, which I'm going to let Kush talk about. Yeah. So the turret is one of the most innovative aspects of our robot, uh, mainly because it's two, dimensionals, two dimensions of free movement which allow us to basically shoot from anywhere on the field. So the first part is obviously this side-to-side -side movement, which is accomplished via a small gear to a big gear on this side, powered by a motor. And then the other part, which is the turret lifting up and down, is accomplished by two linear actuators, which provide tons of torque and allow us to have an accurate motion even while shooting. So our turret is always stable, no matter how many rings we shoot, and that keeps our accuracy extremely high, as we've seen in some of our MTI matches. And then the last part is the slewing ring, which we use. Initially, on some of our first designs, we used different turntables and found that over time, they gained more and more variability and they started to become loose. This slewing ring uses special plastic and it allows it to stay extremely stiff, but still smooth movement throughout our entire match. And so that's how it works. And Owen can talk a little bit about how we achieve our auto aiming and what goes into that. Yeah, absolutely. So one of our biggest goals this year was to be able to always track the high goal or the power shots throughout all of Autonomous and Teleop. And as a programmer, I was tasked with creating a program that would do that. And I drew on some experience from my AP Physics class last year where we learned about the physics of projectile motion and the calculations involved. And so I was able to use a couple of those equations and combine them to create an equation that solves for launch angle, which was um, the main thing that we needed to determine because our shooter can tilt up and down. Um, the left-right tilting was mainly uh, achieved just the Pythagorean theorem, but um, once we can uh, figure out our launch angle, depending on like how fast we're shooting and uh, where we are on the field, we can track the um, high goal throughout all of Autonomous and Teleop. And then I would say that the last two subsystems on this robot are the drivetrain and odometry, respectively. The drivetrain, as you can see, is composed of four motors. Each of them is a bevel box using nylon uh, bevel gears. Um, and from there, the, the central shaft is chained down to the go canums. Um, we find that those are some of the best mechanum wheels on the market right now. And then you also have our odometry system. I'm sure Kush is going to flip the robot over. 
And as you can see over here, the odometry, we have three linearly sprung pods. Uh, the way we accomplish this is via two sideways, or I guess two upright rails, uh, similar to something you would see on a lift. Uh, it makes it so that there is no play uh, in the lateral direction of any of the wheels. Um, and then the springing is essentially just provided by a rubber band um, encasing the wheel in uh, a Delrin box. But that's essentially it. All right, it looks super awesome, guys. I love the black color scheming. Is there any reason you guys stuck with black again this year? <laughs> I think it's just a tradition at this point. Yeah. So, and FR4, our main material, always comes in black. So might as well just stick with it. It's yep. a nice look. All right, looks perfect. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I especially loved the vertical intake, I got to say. Uh, it's great finally learning the secret of the chains. Um, <laughs> yeah. But hey, I mean, it works really, really well. So hats off to Absolutely. you guys. Um, congrats on your amazing score and solo matches and you guys have been performing amazing so far here So I wish you guys the best of luck um, as we go into the playoffs and yeah, hope you got hope you guys uh, Do well there. So thank you again for this interview and thank you. Good luck We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video Stryker is looking for current and future first alumni to join their internship program and first mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their first journey Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the Join button, and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.